All right, well, I think we're going to get started. It's 1.02. Um, thank you for everybody who's here attending and on Zoom. Um, this presentation is called Researching Private Companies, Instruments and Impediments. Um, the way this is structured, though, I was just thinking about this this morning, I should have called it Researching Private Companies, Impediments, Instruments, and More Impediments. <laughs> but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so what we're going to be covering today is we're um, going to briefly discuss what kind of data we usually get from public companies and why it's hard to find that same data for private companies. Um, we're going to look at data sources that exist for private companies. And then, um, again, as I said, uh, the additional impediments or considerations when using those sources. Uh, this presentation should be about 30 to 40 minutes tops. Um, and we're going to begin. So first of all, uh, let me get this out of the way here. Okay, great. Um, so this is me. Um, I'm, my name is Stephen Kish. I'm a systems librarian here at the LTU Library. Um, prior to being a librarian here, I used to work at a, um, like a news aggregation, um, uh, an online news company called Lone Buffalo. And what we were generally hired to do was go out and look at news and data out there for the purposes of reputation management and competitive intelligence. Um, one of my clients at the time was S&P Capital IQ, which is sort of a, a data aggregation and analysis company. Um, we don't have that product here at, at Lawrence Tech. I guess it's called S&P uh, Global Market Intelligence now. But we do have some other tools that we will get to, which I'll be happy to share with you. Um, how to use them and what you can get from them. So, um, a little bit about this presentation. This was, uh, I was inspired because about this time every year, we seem to get some business students down here. They're usually grad students and they are generally looking for information about private companies um, and are frustrated because um, with public companies, a lot of stuff that you can either do a Google search or an Edgar search, which is something we'll get to in a second, and find lots of information. But with private companies, it's not quite the same thing. Um, with a public company, they're owned by shareholders and they're traded on the stock market. And so a, um, a regulatory body called the Securities and Exchange Commission require them to publish data and, and periodic publications giving an update to, um, to shareholders. With private companies, there's no um, analogous thing that, that, that they have to do. It's all voluntary. And with a lot of private companies, too, some of them might be too small to actually have somebody dedicated to you know, preparing uh, financial statements and, and publishing those as well. So that's a consideration, too, um, that they, which might prevent them from being able to um, share this information with everybody. So when searching for uh, public companies, it's generally pretty easy. You can go to a, any kind of online service like Yahoo Finance and then either type in either the name of the company or the stock symbol and you get all kinds of information back. In this case, I was looking for Microsoft. So it has up the top Microsoft Corporation. MSFT is the um, symbol that it trades under. You'll see underneath that it trades on the NASDAQ exchange. So again, this would be something that was um, regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Therefore, they're required to publish this data. And that's what they do. They publish it here. Um, this is the Securities and Exchange Commission website. Um, this is also known as EDGAR. And um, so this is, this is the database that um, all of your financial reports are going to be published on for uh, public companies. So in this, I did an Edgar search for Microsoft, and you'll see a number of reports that come up. Um, and I'm just going to cover this briefly because it's kind of important to understand what people are used to when, when uh, researching companies that they don't necessarily get with private companies. So when you're doing um, an Edgar search, some of the standard um, reports that uh, publicly owned companies are required to publish, you'll see there's an 8K. Um, over on the right, there's the selected filings. There's a 10K, a 10Q. There's other reports too, but the, the three big ones are the 8K, the 10K, and the 10Q. And an 8K is it's, um, 
is Form BK. It's used for the prompt disclosure of specific events or material information that occurs between the filing of quarterly or annual reports, ensuring timely communication with investors. So that's, <clears throat> that's just when it happens. 10K is an annual report providing a comprehensive overview of a publicly traded company's financial performance, business operations, overall financial health, and it's uh, filed with the SEC. And a 10Q is a quarterly and offers an unaudited financial statements, a condensed version of information found in the annual 10K. So you look here, when you're searching Edgar for Microsoft, here's their 10Q, it's their quarterly statement. It has some vital stats on Microsoft. And then a financial statement, and this is what a lot of students are looking for. Um, particularly, uh, we get a lot of requests for numbers for um, how much sales they do, how many employees, but sometimes they want some of this more granular information as well. So here's the 10K. Um, this is the annual one. And this one's a much longer report. It has a lot of the same information, but also it also has um, disclosures about market risk, um, any kind of uh, controls and procedures that they might have in place for financial reporting, um, just to keep everything on the level. When you're looking for this kind of information, though, with private companies, it's basically a desert. Um, if you, for, for the um, purpose of this presentation, I picked a local privately owned business called Gordon Food Services. I'm sure you've heard them before. They supply a lot of restaurants, um, big gatherings, churches, that kind of stuff. So Gordon Food Services, I, I did an Edgar search, and because they're a private company, obviously nothing shows up on Securities and Exchange Commission website. Likewise, back with Yahoo Finance, you search them and it only gives you the most cursory information. It just says that they're from Grand Rapids, Michigan, which actually isn't true. They're actually from Wyoming, uh, Michigan, and just kind of who they are, and um, and that's about it. Yeah. it just, Thank you so much for talking about your mind. Can we just uh, use my other piece of paper? Uh, Conan, I just was looking at my picture, and I noticed. Yes, thank you. Yeah, if, 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 if everybody on mute can, uh, on Zoom can mute their microphones, please. Yeah, let me see if I, let me see if I can here. <laughs> Okay, hang on. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Okay, so give me a second here. Okay, so we're back. So, um, so yeah, so Gordon Food Service, they don't have any kind of um, fiduciary responsibility to report any of this information, so it's just not out there as far as like a Google search is concerned, as far as an Edgar search is concerned, Yahoo Finance. So one of the things you want to think about, or the first thing you should think about when you're, when you're doing the research for these companies is, well, you know, some of them actually may self-report um, through other means besides Edgar, or besides, uh, you know, Yahoo, what's reportable in Yahoo Finance. So when I have students in here, one of the first things we always do is we take a look at the company's website. And so this, I actually pulled this from the Gordon Food Service website, and it does have some information on here where they're located, Wyoming, Michigan, how many years they've been in business, how many employees, 22,000, uh, $21 billion in annual sales. So uh, right from go, that's a little bit of base information that you have to work with. However, this being said, um, websites aren't always a reliable source for getting business data. Um, a great example is I was looking at the SpaceX website this morning, and it's just basically a very uh, attractive advertisement for SpaceX. So tools that we are going to have is in the library, um, I've organized in a research guide that you can access through the library's website. And I did this just to basically save time. Um, 
So if you go to the library's website, which you can click on library if you're in Canvas, or um, if you go to ltu.edu, there's a drop down option for library. And down on the bottom left side, where it says academic resources, we have LT research guides right there. When it opens, you'll see a section for business and information technology. You want to go ahead and click on business and management. And this will take you to um, a collection of resources that I put together, um, some of which are greater than the scope of this presentation, so we're not going to take a look at them today. I'm going to just focus on the ones that are relevant to this discussion. So the ones that are relevant to this discussion are going to be located in the databases and journals. We have subscriptions to, um, to uh, multiple services that do like case studies and SWOT analyses, and we'll talk about those in a moment. Um, I compiled the business entity search um, by state list, which is links to all 50 states, um, being able to search their, uh, the, the websites where businesses would have to file um, certain paperwork to do business in those states. Um, a federal government search site, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, because that's sort of a, a Google aggregate search. Um, private company information, which we have uh, three analytics databases that we subscribe to, which publish business data, and we'll, we'll talk about those in a moment too. And then a press release search, which that's sort of another uh, Google aggregate search that I put together. Um, and I'll explain the purpose behind that in just a moment. So when you're in the academic sources and you're looking at the academic databases, the two biggest databases that you're going to find your business information in are going to be Business Source Complete and ProQuest, ProQuest One Business. So in those, um, you're going to find case studies, which generally are more industry specific, but may mention some of the companies that you're looking for. But more importantly, they're going to have what's called a SWOT analysis. Now, SWOT analyses are published um, by analytics companies. There's two that um, we have access to. Um, and what SWOT stands for, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So that's sort of an idea of um, where the business is at and where it should go to, to improve. So the first one in Business Source Complete, um, we get yearly SWOT analyses from a company called MarketLine. They're an analytics company, just like S&P Capital IQ that I mentioned before. Um, and they also publish uh, uh, reports uh, and case studies on, um, on industry. But there's no actual case study for Gordon Food Service, but there is a SWOT analysis um, there. And there's uh, ProQuest One Business is the other database. Now, again, no case studies, but you can find SWOT analyses from that too. So if you're attending in person today, I'm going to pass out um, an example of a SWOT analysis from both of these um, for people to look at. Now, the, the one from MarketLine, I'm just opening it up right now, um, it does have the number of employees in it, but it doesn't actually mention any kind of dollar figures. The one from Global Data has both. So these are just for people to look at. Thank you, John. So um, going back uh, to Gordon Food Service. So yeah, it lists 9,000 employees. Um, and I, I'm keeping note of this. We're going to compare some numbers at the end of this presentation and discuss why there's differences between uh, each of these reports. Global Data reports 20,000 employees, which is a lot closer. I think that was actually the amount that Gordon Food Service reported. Um, and they said that, uh, $16 billion in revenue. Um, if you look at the actual packets that I'm passing out to, it's, a, it's much thicker. It's very thorough. It has information on corporate directories, acquisition data, competitors. So um, that, that one's a little bit more robust of a report. Moving along to another resource that we have in our uh, business uh, research guide is the uh, business entity search by state. Now, um, this has actually been amended since I did this PowerPoint presentation, and I might dip out of the PowerPoint for just a second, because um, talking with my wife, who is a banking attorney, 
she mentioned that it might be useful to also have a link to um, UCC filings. Now, with the UCC filing, it's the Uniform Commercial Code. And basically how it works is anytime any company puts up any uh, type of collateral uh, for borrowing money, there's a, there's a lien put on it, but also there's a UCC filing as well. So if we go back, so again, here's the website. We're gonna go to business and management. The business entity search by state. So again, it has all 50 states that we can search through. And we'll look at Michigan's in just a moment. But at the top, I did add a section for UCC filings. And with the UCC filings, it says, uh, uniform commercial code filings allow creditors to notify other creditors about debtors' assets, uses collateral, collateral for secure transaction. UCC liens filed with uh, Secretary of State offices act as a public notice by the creditor of the creditor's interest in the property. And we can go down here and we can go to Michigan. Click on go. We're gonna do the UCC online search. This goes to the Michigan Secretary of State website. We're gonna do the debtor quick name search. And we're gonna search for organizations. We're Gordon Food Service. Take a search. So you can see there's a lot of UCC filings. This is a little bit of a dead end unless you're willing to fork out money to actually get um, the, the actual filings themselves. It, it, it's a nice service as far as like it shows you what's out there and when they lapse and whether they're active or not. But as far as actually getting the granular data about um, like any of the you know, collateralized assets or, or any of the specific information, it's just it's the service you have to pay for. And that's generally on, on most state websites that do UCC filings. But that's there. It's like if, uh, and, and where this might be useful too is like if you were studying, um, I, I, I don't know, um, I, I, I mean, there might be like a, so there might be something where there's like a supply chain where a, one company may have had a UCC filing on another company to collateralize something as, you know, part of the terms of delivery of something. Um, and you would, that's where you would get that from. Uh, again, you, you need to pay the money to actually get the, the actual uh, granular information. And as far as uh, the state of Michigan website goes, I guess I can go back to the PowerPoint now. Um, when you go ahead and search for, uh, for business information through the state of Michigan website, um, it's through a service called LORA, it's uh, Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs. And in this case, I mean, you would just search as uh, Gordon Food Service. Um, and it brings back um, a number of things. Um, so when you're looking through state websites, the information that you're gonna get here is mostly just like the name of the business, if they're doing business as another entity, so they might have a different name that they're doing business under, um, who the agent is on behalf of that business, some contact information, and also the information that you uh, glean from this might be handy when you're doing your um, UCC search later. But there's not too much other than contact information um, that you're gonna be able to get from these sites. The ID number, by the way, the higher the number is the more recent the filing. Another section to our data sources that I put together is I put together a, a Google search bar. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna add a, another agency to this today. I was just thinking about how th there might be one other agency that would be a good fit for this list. Um, when we teach bibliographic instruction in the library, one of the things we do is we teach people how to be better searchers. And one of the tools is obviously Google too. So we teach how to be better Google searchers, how to search for different sites under different um, domain suffixes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the Google search that I put together here is just to sort of bypass that. It's like you just don't even need to know how to do any of this stuff. It's just for your convenience. But it's still good, it's a good uh, tool to learn. Um, so what you do is up in the left hand corner where it says enhanced by Google, there's a little search bar. You can go ahead and you can search um, for Gordon Food Service and it'll search anything from any of these agencies here. 
and it brings up lots of different information. There's instructions on the website too that if you want to eliminate any of these agencies from the search, you can. Now, why would you search for regulatory, through regulatory filings? Um, well, here's the information you can glean from these. You can uh, get information about registration and licensing, um, compliance with government regulations, uh, financial disclosures, um, environmental impact, safety records, consumer complaints, public filings, and employee practices. So, um, and also, something else to be noted too, so if you were searching, because you, you might see some, there's some uh, Edgar results up there as well for Gordon's Food Service, which is a private company. There may be other companies that are in business or have partnerships with private companies that file information that is related to the relationship with that company. Um, and so you might be able to get a little bit of inform a little bit more insight about the private companies just through looking through the public corporation filings through a service like Edgar too. So that's why this is useful. So news sources. This kind of goes back to my last job as well. We scoured press releases all the time. Um, both large and small private and public companies use press services to make announcements. And this is a good tool to see what they've announced. Um, if you look at a lot of local news, they scour this too when they're uh, talking, Meyer might be opening a new location down the road, or there may be uh, 12 new Burger Kings around Wayne County. Um, Generally speaking, they get that information from press release services. So again, it's one of those things where you search in the bar and it brings you back some results. Here are all of the press wires for Gordon Food Service. Now the kind of information you're going to get from these um, include company announcements. Um, they might announce financial results, um, partnerships, new product or service launches, um, industry awards or recognition, uh, leadership changes, corporate social responsibility initiatives, um, crisis management, um, events or conferences they might be able to attend, or industry trends. So you can get quite a bit of information from there now. So lastly, this is the part that most of our students want and that's um, from the analytics companies. So we do have a section for this too on our website. Um, we subscribe to three analytics databases. One's Data Axle, the next one's Merchant, and the final one is Privco. And this is where you're gonna get a lot of like your hard data for companies. The first one's Data Axle. One thing I wanted to point out when searching them is they have some like really weird truncations for the names of the businesses that they uh, host information about. So when I searched for Gordon Food Service, it brought back no records. So don't be discouraged. I went back and I searched for Gordon Food and then I limited it to like Wyoming, Michigan because according to the website, that's where they said they were based. And there we go. So it's Gordon Food SVC INC. So that's how this is uh, indexed in here. Um, Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, you, you don't want to give up right away. You want to play around with these a little bit. It's not as forgiving as Google is. Um, so, you know, scrolling, scrolling down through this website, um, it, it lists uh, the number of employees as 700 and the corporate sales volume as uh, 300 million. So that's a bit different than what they listed. Now, one thing I'm going to bring up, and we'll probably discuss this again at the end as well, is that um, there are other listings for, for Gordon Food Service or types of, like there's a Gordon Food Service distribution when you search this, and that has a different number of employees and a different sales volume as well. Um, it's possible that when Gordon Food Service reports on their website, it might just be an aggregate of all of these. So that's one thing you want to consider when doing these searches. Is this the full a business picture? Um, it, it, I'm sure, you know, it, they said 20,000 employees versus 8,000. 
big difference. Um, so that's something you want to consider when searching through this. Uh, the next one we have is mergent. Um, and when you search through mergent, there's, you have five options, and the only one unchecked is the only one that's relevant to this presentation. So the US company databases, active or inactive, and the international company databases, active and inactive, you can go ahead and just uncheck those. What you want to check is DNB private company database. DNB stands for Dun and Bradstreet. Um, they, like Mergent, are a financial analytics company. Um, so DNB provides this uh, private company data to Mergent. So go ahead and check that and then do the search. And as you see on the other side too, you can search by classifications like the NAICS and the, um, and the uh, SIC code. Um, so it, this is obviously a tool um, as, as data Excel for more than just searching private companies. For the purpose of this discussion, we're just gonna stick to the DNB private company database. And there you go. So Gordon Food Service, um, Grand Rapids, Michigan, close to Wyoming. Um, and on here, um, it has uh, net sales and gross profit, both the same number, uh, 80, roughly $89 million. Was there a, oops, was there a, And somewhere in here, too, it has the, the amount of employees as well. It's in there somewhere. Um, the last analytics database that we subscribe to is Privco. They do just private companies. So when you search for Gordon Food Services through Privco, um, First of all, you get uh, 15,600 employees, which is a little bit closer than the last two were. Um, and then the revenues, we're looking at 15.4 billion, which is closer to what Gordon Food Service also reported there too. So I'm gonna pass out another group of reports that I printed from all three of these. So you can kind of see what they actually look like. Again, there's much more data in these than just the cursory things that I'm going over here. But, but that's generally like a, the bare minimum of information that students would be looking for. So I told you we're keeping track of these numbers and there's a reason why. Um, if you compare what's on the Gordon Food Service website to any of these other uh, sites or compare them to each other, you have wildly, wildly different numbers here. So again, Gordon Food Service website, 21 billion, 22,000 employees. So MarketLine didn't give us any kind of dollar figures, but they gave us about half, just under half of the employees. Um, global data, pretty close, money-wise. I mean, what's $5 billion? And then the employees are pretty close, too. The state websites and government searches, you're not going to find any of that information. So data Axel, 300 million um, and 8,000 employees. Mergent, 91 million, way further, and 14,000 employees. And then Privco was, um, as far as the three analytics go, um, the closest as far as dollars and number of employees. Now, um, that brings you the question, like, so which source do you actually trust? Um, and, and to this, I want to speak a little bit about the research that I did for all three of these analytics groups. Um, just to kind of, you know, because you're going to have to use your own judgment when using this data. Um, so data Axel, you may have used them before. They uh, were previously called Business Research Services, Info USA, and Reference USA. And reaching out to them, they were by far the most responsive as far as their customer service goes. Um, they actually wrote me an email back telling me about what their data sources were, because I was kind of curious, like how did they get to these numbers? 
And this is what they wrote. They wrote, to get the data, we will review all business filings with Secretary of State offices, new business filings, utility and new phone hookups, even listings in yellow pages and other business directories. From there, we have a team of tele-researchers who call each business at least once a year. With this call, we are confirming things like the company name and industries, but it also gives us a chance to expand on the record and ask for names of key contacts, how many employees they have, et cetera. So for sales volumes, you have to use a formula to estimate annualized numbers. To do that, you utilize data previously compiled, like industry, employees, location, years, and business. So basically what they're saying is, is they have experts at their company that sort of guesstimate what these all are. Um, so it, the thing I don't like about data, Axel, uh, again, the weird abbreviations, and one other thing I have to point out is if you're looking at this report, their numbers that they're reporting for Gordon Food Service are from 2005, so they're ancient. Um, now, again, this might not be indicative of all the businesses that they follow, but you know, it's, uh, it is important to note that the information is pretty old. Moving on to Mergent, um, I have to say that off the bat, I was most biased to want to like this service. Um, the reason is, is because um, of my old connection with S&P Capital IQ. These guys were always on my, on my competitor's watch list. Um, so uh, D&B is Dun & Bradstreet's financial analytics company, um, which contracts through Mergent for the service. Uh, Mergent is owned by FTSE Russell, which FTSE Group and Russell um, were and are both analytics companies as well. And FTSE Russell is owned by the London Stock Exchange, which also compiles financial data. So these were all uh, S&P Capital IQ competitors, which is why I wanted to like this one the most. Um, so data sources, uh, they actually didn't write me an email back. They sent me a form, like a brochure about how, what their data collection processes are like. Um, you'll be able to find it on our website because they told me I was allowed to share it. So their data sources are business registration income, uh, UCCs, FEIN numbers. We also acquire state and local tax and licensing files. We currently partner with new business compilers for business information. The relationship includes business coverage and scheduled updates to information. DNB investigates and verifies business entities to respond directly to customer qu queries. Third party source and public records. Um, so uh, like it kind of like they're guessing too, basically, is what it sounds like. Um, so the things I didn't like about Mergent, even though I really wanted to like them the most, is that their sales numbers are the most off from the Gordon Food Services website. They, they, they get it mostly wrong. Um, again, though, because the Gordon Food Service numbers are an aggregate, it, you might like look for like um, subsidiaries or distributors, that might be all included in the GFS data. So you might want to poke around Mergent a little bit more. Um, so on a, on a positive note though, this data came from 2015. So it's a lot newer than Data Axles was. Last is Privco. So Privco actually did not respond to my inquiries for information. Um, so I, what, what I'm presenting here is basically information I scraped off of their website. They only do searches for private companies, which is great. You know, they have a specialization, so you'd expect them to have the best numbers. And for the purposes of this presentation, they did. Um, their website admits to utilizing AI and algorithmic data modeling. So from their site, it says, our process begins with a curated list of reputa reputable data sources of filings, publications, and credible news sources. We use these sources to educate, inform, and model our AI and machine learning algorithms to uncover revenue, employee counts, valuation, growth signals, deals, and more. Our highly trained team of data scientists and engineers then verify and update thousands of individual profiles on a rolling basis, ensuring accurate, up-to-date information. Just because um, I reported this by the other two, I will also say one of the things that I found the most pleasant about Privco um, is that their reporting is from 2022. So they seem to have the most recent reporting out of the three. They seem to have the most accurate reporting out of the three. Now, does that make the other two bad? Well, no. 
you know, I did some other searches with the other two, and I found some useful stuff that I didn't necessarily find in Privco. But I mean, I, I guess there's a reason why we subscribe to a database that focuses specifically on private businesses and only private businesses. So that's so now we're coming to the end. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for being here. I hope that you learned a lot about all the wealth of information that there is out there. Um, I hope you um, learned about how we're trying to make it easy for students and faculty to access this information. And I just wanted to remind um, everybody in the College of Business that I am, uh, I'm actually the liaison from the library. So if you needed anything above and beyond this for any of your research or your students did, they're always welcome to reach out to me either at my email address, which is skish at ltu.edu, or they can email just the library and I'll respond. Um, I hope that everybody found this useful, and if anybody has any questions, I would like to open the floor to questions at this point. Yes. Uh, uh, some of the information that you, you shared with us, uh, does that actually come up through our staff, or do we have to come to the, the library to get some of those information? No, everything is actually available through the library's website. So the, the databases you can access, the, so the question was, is does, do you need to come to the library to access this, or can you do it remotely? And the answer to this question is that you can do it remotely. I'm going to go back to screen sharing for just a moment. I'm going to go, let's, like, let's just start ltu.edu. Okay, so if you've never been to the library's website before, it is accessible um, through here as well. So you click up on faculty and staff and go down to library. There's also a library link in Canvas too that'll take you right to our website. The three databases I mentioned, Data Axle, Mergent, and Privco, you can access right through the databases A through Z tab. But what I, I would recommend instead is go down to LT Research Guides, go to Business and Information Technology, Business and Management. And then this is the guide that I, I put together specifically. Um, well, it's, 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 it's a much bigger scope than just specific, this specific uh, presentation. But this is the one where you'd go to. Um, if you were looking for the private companies, it's right here under Data Sources, Private Companies. There's a link to Yahoo Finance, so you can search to see if um, there's like a stock symbol that comes up. Um, a lot of the bigger private businesses, Yahoo Finance will also just tell you that they're private businesses. And if it's a private business, here's your three data sources, DataAxel, Merchant Privco. The SWOT analyses that we talked about earlier are in Business Source Complete and ProQuest One Business, which are up here. Uh, Harvard Business Review also does a lot of case studies for industry. As far as the news sources go, I might as well mention now, we do offer free access to all LTU students and faculty, the Wall Street Journal, which is another great source of information. The press release search is here. You can just go ahead and type in whatever you want to take a look at. So in this case, let's take a look at SpaceX. And it brings up a result list that's, basic, that's just um, press releases that have been released by SpaceX, by partners of SpaceX, by other people interested in SpaceX. And then over here, for the federal government search site, again, these are all the regulatory agencies that are so far represented in the search. If you, were to t if you wanted to find something about SpaceX here too, so this is gonna look at just government websites, it says SpaceX. I'm gonna move my head out of the way here. So yeah, so the first thing it brings up is SEC.gov, Securities and Exchange Commission, EPA. Um, usually if something shows up for a company shows up under EPA, it's not good. Um, Department of Transportation down here. There's more, you can, and you can scroll down just like you can on a regular Google search. If you're interested in getting the most recent ones, you can change it from relevance to date. So here's some regulatory, here's something Final and proposed rules for SpaceX. Um, 
But this just saves you time. You know, one of the things we teach when we're trying to teach uh, students to be more effective Google searchers and search for um, data that's out there on the web is we teach them how to um, fine tune their Google searches. But in this here, I constructed this so you actually don't have to. You can just, um, you can just type in who you want to look at. Um, and, and it searches for public, any, anything that's regulatory dealing with public companies will pop up here too, so Microsoft. And if you maybe, maybe you don't want the SEC stuff, so you can just do, and it explains it all on the side too, it gives you all the instructions on how to remove um, results from it. So this is minus. So some EPA news releases, the Department of Transportation, something to do with Microsoft, Department of Commerce. If you would like to have a little uh, more in-depth tour of all this too, you're always welcome to either, uh, I'd be happy to do a private Zoom or if you wanted to stop in on the library on a less snowy day, I'd be happy to help you with that too. My pleasure. Um, any other questions? Okay, well, I'd like to thank you for this. So apparently this is being uh, put on YouTube as well if you need to refer back to it. Most of everything you're gonna need is gonna be right here on the site. For people who may be unfamiliar with some of these terms too, I did start, I did start a tab for definitions and like, you know, if you were curious on what the difference between a 10Q and a 10K is, or between a NAICS code and the SIC code, or any, like some of the more heavy hitters of the regulatory agencies we talked about, I've started putting together definitions list as, as well. So that's there for you, to help you as well too. Oh, my pleasure. And you know, and this is another thing too, is like if, 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 if there's any classes that you feel that would benefit from having this presentation, we would be happy to reschedule a presentation to, to do this just for your class as well. All right, well with that, I think I'm gonna sign off today. Again, thank you so much. I hope, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. It's a nice white one out there. I will send you the YouTube link when it's ready. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure.